the Romanian Ministry of Defense published a draft law that allows shooting down drones that illegally violate its airspace based on the level of threat and risk to human life and property, reports Reuters. The bill sets out the specific conditions under which Romania will control the use of its airspace by both manned and unmanned aircraft. At a European Union level, efforts continue for a unitary approach to unmanned aerial vehicles as well as to establish measures to counter risks, the bill says. However, Black Sea military operations, the massive increase of the use of UAVs, either military or adapted for military use, continue to create major risks at the Ukrainian border and near Romania's border area, the Romanian Defense Ministry said. The measures proposed for manned aircraft are gradual, from locating and identifying the aircraft to attempting contact, interception and warning shots. A manned aircraft flying without authorization could be destroyed only if it was launching an attack or responding aggressively to interception. Unmanned aerial vehicles, most commonly drones, can be destroyed, neutralized or taken under control depending on the level of threat. Destruction is a last resort. According to the proposed law, allied systems present in Romania can also take part in any actions under collective defense treaties with NATO and EU member states. Final parliamentary approval will come after the law is approved by the government. Romania, which shares a 650-kilometer-long border with Ukraine, has repeatedly found fragments of Russian drones fall on its territory over the past year as Moscow keeps attacking Ukraine's port infrastructure. Earlier this month, Romania's radar systems detected four separate signals, possibly from drones, that violated its national airspace. The situation is concerning against the backdrop of regular falls of Russian drone fragments on Romanian territory, a member of the EU and NATO. These incidents occur amid Moscow's attacks on Ukrainian port infrastructure. Concerns particularly heightened in September when Russian drones violated the airspace of Romania and Latvia. Russian units deployed in Russia's Kaliningrad Oblast may be preparing sabotage activities in the Baltic states and Poland. Lithuanian broadcaster LRT, together with investigative journalists from Poland and Estonia, reported this. This study analyzes current and potential threats from Russia and Belarus. One of the journalists' anonymous sources, a Lithuanian intelligence source, said that Russian special forces in Kaliningrad Oblast and units affiliated with the secret services are very likely involved in planning and carrying out various sabotage activities in the region. The source said that the desired effect is achieved relatively cheaply. Attacks are usually carried out by people recruited through social media. Their capabilities are very limited and they focus on smaller but more easily accessible targets. The immediate impact of each attack is quite small, but the overall impact is determined by the number of attacks and the reaction to them in society. These are unsuccessful attempts to sow a sense of instability and insecurity in Western societies and undermine support for Ukraine, the source said. The article mentioned a series of detentions in Poland due to past incidents involving possible preparations for sabotage, of which could possibly have a Russian trail. Among the Russian units in Kaliningrad, the 390th Naval Reconnaissance Station of the Baltic Fleet may be the most dangerous. Its base is located in Paruznoy, near the Russian naval base in Baltisk. Recent reports indicate that there are up to 120 servicemen there, including personnel. These special units are being trained to carry out missions against NATO countries on the Baltic Sea coast, in particular against strategic targets in Lithuania and Poland. Potential targets could include, for example, the strategic Lithuanian port of Klaipeda, which is irreplaceable in NATO's logistics for operations in the region. One of the journalists' anonymous sources said that in the event of a hypothetical Russian attack on NATO, this sabotage group will do its job. Earlier, German media reported that Russian vessels could be collecting data on critical infrastructure in the Baltic Sea. Recently, intelligence agencies from several countries have warned of the risk of Russian sabotage at Norwegian energy facilities. Ukraine is on high alert for possible North Korean troops entering the war as early as this week, marking the first time 
another country's army has intervened in the war. Senior Ukrainian intelligence officials told the Financial Times that about 3,000 North Korean troops had been transported to the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. Notably, the contingent was transported in civilian trucks. One official said only a few hundred of the 3,000 were special forces, with the rest being regular troops. On Monday, they were placed in barracks, about 50 kilometers from the Ukrainian border, where they awaited further orders from Russian commanders. The report says, the deployment of North Korean troops is expected to strengthen the 50,000-strong Russian force that has stepped up efforts in recent days to retake Russia's Kursk region. But Ukrainian intelligence is questioning the combat effectiveness of the reinforcements. They have never left their country before. They have never been in real combat, and their experience is very far from the realities of modern warfare. A Ukrainian intelligence official noted that North Korean troops had only recently seen for the first time the various types of killer drones that have become commonplace on the battlefield. Ukrainian officials also believe that North Korean soldiers could be used as cannon fodder by Russia. Have they done trench warfare before? I doubt it, said another Ukrainian intelligence official. Scott Boston, a senior defense analyst at the RAND Corporation, said the tactic of using North Korean troops in Russia's war against Ukraine would discourage Pyongyang from sending more highly trained fighters. At the same time, defense expert Yang Wook from the Asan Institute for Policy Studies in Seoul questioned the advisability of such a strategy given that joint offensive operations require coordination between Russian and North Korean soldiers. The North Koreans won't be able to speak Russian, and the two armies will have very different strategic cultures, so coordinating with them as disposable troops would be very risky and difficult. If I were the Russian commander, I would use the North Koreans for defensive operations, which would require much less preparation time, he explained. One Ukrainian official commenting on the likely use of North Korean soldiers as assault troops said they would be at greater risk of being captured. This, in turn, would undermine Moscow and Pyongyang's objections to North Korean involvement in the war in Ukraine.